let me introduce you, please. This is a great honor and pleasure to be here introducing you tonight. So Ramin, well, for someone who is new to the call and doesn't know his story or history, here we go. Ramin has built four multi-million dollars MLM businesses as a distributor. This was in 1999 to 2003. He founded the MLM's most advanced MLM university, the Forensic Network, in 1999. And we are so honored to have Ramin uh, with us, like the founder himself. Founded MLM's premier and most prestigious MLM company in 2005, which is our famous and amazing Opulence Global. Voted world's top MLM compensation plan expert in 2010. Well, I don't think it was just 2010. We, um, as we know Ramin and we know the history of the company and so forth, Ramin is definitely the top compensation plan expert. He has been featured in Networking Times as Master Networker 2011, featured on the cover of American Business Journal with Warren Buffett in 2013. What an honor. Voted world number two all-time MLMer, businessforhome.org in 2014. Nominated for Ernest & Young Entrepreneur of the Year in 2015. Voted in MLM's first inductee Hall of Fame with Paul Zane, Pilser and Lake in 2016. His company ranked top momentum company in MLM in the pandemic. That means our Opulence Global as per the business for home in 2020, where everybody else was crashing, we were growing and voted top networker again by businessforhome.org in 2020. Well, it's my absolutely honor and privilege to be here today introducing our amazing, the most generous, visionary, um, mastermind, compensation plan expert, Heart of Gold CEO, Rami Mezgarlou. Rami, please take the floor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, all right, let's get started. Um, last week, we went to the first part of the Great Reset, and I added uh, my own uh, title to that. I call Surviving the Great Reset, the End of Freedom. So we spent an hour on that, something I spent about two and a half years on. And tonight we're going to go through second part and we'll tell you how through opulence we can survive a lot of that. And it's just shocking to me because what MLM used to be before the pandemic, it used to be that we would say to the job people and the traditional business people, the only thing we had was a bit of the time freedom and, and potential financial freedom. That's something that to, uh, traditional business and jobs don't offer, at least most traditional businesses don't offer, and no jobs offer, basically. Um, but today, everything that we have uh, has become even more important than money. Like the, right now, the best use case of MLM, especially international company like ours and opulence, is not even the income. The best use case of Opulence Global right now, it's not even the $4 million compensation plan. It's freedom. And the freedom is worth a lot more than a compensation plan. So before, in order to get freedom, because we didn't have the great reset, you only needed the freedom the money could buy. Some of the most basic liberties now being taken away. So now the freedom that comes with opulence business or an MLM business, international MLM business, is, is free. These are, this is the, um, the freedoms that you've been enjoying your entire lifetime, you know, entire lifetime, being taken away. And all of that is embedded in the opulence business. So you're going to get this completely different view of your business, completely different view. So uh, the more I studied this, the more I said, my goodness, it's like, it's almost like, Opulence was tailor-made for the Agenda 2030 World Economic Forum. It was tailor-made, and yet it was created 18 years before uh, the Great Reset. Uh, so, and I have to reiterate one thing. 
This is where having a company that's not an upstart becomes so important because upstart companies don't have these capabilities. So let's get started. <clears throat> Surviving the Great Reset, the end of freedom. So number one thing we talk about this is digital ID that will replace all IDs, including your passport, controls all aspects of your life, you know, even your internet access. I mean, everything is going to be attached to, to your, so, uh, to your uh, digital ID, including your social services. See, that's not there right now. Right now, none of these governmental departments are really attached to each other. So you go there and you bring your ID, you get your driver's license, right? They're not attached to the tax department, right? So right now, the governments, they're, you know, you could have all kinds of things and they don't know from each other. But when you go to a digital ID, your name goes on the blockchain and everybody that has access to that database, police, ambulance, everybody, they get to see everything. So the digital, so the problem with, this causes a lot of problems and which we're gonna talk about today, but the digital ID um, is the foundation of the plan that the World Economic Forum has to control the world's population. Now let's talk about who's World Economic Forum. Well, in the old days, they had a different name. You, some of you have heard the name. It's called Luminati's, right? People who own the world. The big banks, right? The billionaires, Rockefellers, those guys. So in 1974, the name changed to the World Economic Forum. It's still the same people. You got about a thousand of the largest corporations in the world, the Bill Gates of the world, BlackRock, Blackstone, all these guys who own the world. So they basically, because they are so powerful, they help politicians get elected. Of course, when the politicians get elected, then they become their puppets. So it's just that simple. If you want to get elected, you need power and money behind you. And if you know you need the media, like BlackRock owns all the media, anything you can imagine, CNN, Fox, they own it all. So when you're that powerful, then you own the regulators, the presidents. So the digital ID, is the foundation how is the whole how everything else they're going to do is going to build upon. So with that, by the way, the dig digital ID, you know, um, it already kind of got implemented last year with the with the COVID pass, right? And we have arrived can. It's just a program in Canada. You have it in your country. It's just a program expanding. And we knew back then, and I did a lot of posts on that back then. That the excuse was the COVID, the vaccine, all this stuff. But there were reports out, videos of people who were working on these things, but there was over 500 other items of information that had nothing to do with pandemic COVID vaccine. They were out, including how many parking tickets you have. So when they built this out, this the COVID was excuse for them to, to roll it out. And um, so it's coming out. Every country is going to have it. When you do that, aside, uh, along that with it, at the same time, simultaneously, in some countries, sometimes some countries afterwards, they're going to come with a social score. And what basically social score would do is well, digital ID will eliminate your privacy completely. Everybody can see everything uh, who's, who's on that blockchain, the government, right? Social score will take away all your freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of choice. Because for social score, it's similar to, um, it's, it's similar to uh, your, you know, your credit, credit score, right? You know, if you have bad credit score, then you're not going to get the loan, right? Or if you have like, you know, you see when you're on social media and you got a star rating, right? You got star rating for um, restaurants. So I have a question for you. Would you go to a restaurant or use anybody uh, that has a one-star rating? You won't. You're not going to do that. You want to be going with people who have it. So they're taking that concept and bring it to individual people. 
So just like businesses, now you got to be very conscious of your social score because if your social score is bad, then nobody wants to do business with you. Nobody wants to hire you. You know, you get discriminated against. This stuff already happens in China. And you already know how it happens here. If you have a bad star rating or if you have a bad credit score, now it's going to be on you. And guess who decides your social score? Well, sometimes it's people, but mostly it's the government. So anytime you don't like something they're doing, they're going to give you a bad score because it's the law. Like, take this shot, whether you want or not, a five-year-old or your six-month-old baby, take it. If you decide not to do that, you get a bad social score. And this is how they force people into the compliance. So social score is attached to the digital ID. Third, carbon footprint. Essentially, they want this, uh, the world to become uh, Netherlands. Netherlands is like this already. I don't know if you've been to the Netherlands, uh, some country, some, some people called Holland. If you go there, everybody's on the bicycle. Everybody. They got more bicycle than they got people. And uh, you see them. I mean, it's kind of cute where ladies are all dressed up with their skirts and everything else and makeup. And they are just, you know, this has been the case in the Netherlands for a long time. And they're one of the leading countries for this, by the way, for all the stuff we're talking about. So they want everybody to be biking and walking everywhere. So how do you force people to give up their cars? So well, they come up with something called carbon footprint. Now, the carbon footprint is not new. They had it for factories or for companies before, how much of you know, polluting the environment. It's been on for 20 years. Now they're bringing it on companies, smaller companies, not big, not factories, smaller company, any company. You know, it doesn't have to not making anything, any company. And they make bringing it on you and I as individual. So if you have an ICE car, internal combustion engine, which is gasoline car, then your carbon footprint is higher than somebody who has an electric car or even somebody much higher than somebody who's on a bicycle. So the guy on the bicycle gets a better score than you, right? So you lose your freedom of your mobility. So a digital ID is your privacy. Social score is your freedom. And then you got the carbon footprint. It's, it's your uh, freedom of mobility, which includes, by the way, traveling. Right? If you like to go travel, to go on vacation stuff, all of that, because you're, you're on the digital ID now, they know exactly how much traveling you do. So people like me who travel on, on business, I have no idea what's going to happen to us. I'm assuming it's going to happen what's happening to other companies right now on the footprint, carbon footprint, which is fines, right? You pay this massive fines, or you have to buy this thing called the carbon credits. It's very, very expensive. What that is, is that a company who's allocated X amount of carbon credits, they don't get to use it. They get to sell it to me at a high price and it's just so I can fly. So again, this is what they're doing is bringing down mobility. Now, you already know that's happening because how bad is the airports? You have a question, you said, why? I mean, what happened? We used to fly before. Why is it that the airport's jammed up? Why is it that you cannot get a passport, right? They're trying to stop people from traveling. Now, there's many reasons for that, but one of, the, one of the reasons is that if you're a government of a country, you don't want your money to be spent outside your country. You want to spend inside your country. Why? Because it helps the economy, makes you look good as a, as a regulator. If you're in power, you don't want your money in your Mexico. You want to stay right here, right? So it doesn't make any sense why all of a sudden in Canada, I'm sure it's true everywhere, we can't get a passport anymore because the backlog, well, we never had traveling before pandemic. It's all planned. So the carbon footprint is the next one. Then we got the, you know, 15 minute city. Now, if they accomplish this, this is the only one I question that if they can actually do or not, but they're already trying it. If they accomplish this, it's a serious problem because you'll be forced to work and live within 15 minutes of where you live, right? So you can't work more than 15 minutes walking, by the way, 15 minutes walking or on a, on a bicycle. So, and they, they tested this during the pandemic and they said they thought it worked really well. It was a good thing for them because they said, you know, um, during the pandemic, because people were afraid to go places, a lot of people stayed within 15 minutes. Now, this concept is not new. It was initially made by economists of Colombia back in the 
90s. And that concept, it was called 15 Minute City. And that concept, of World Economic Forum has picked it up. So basically what happens if, you, if you're outside the 15 minutes, well, you will pay huge fines and penalties because your carbon footprint is too high. So 15 minute city. I question if they can get this one done because I think a lot of people, it's hard to do, but it's on the agenda. More, uh, by the way, there are some countries uh, already, there are some countries already trying this. So um, especially in the UK, I think it's uh, uh, Oxford is doing that. Um, what's the other one? There was four locations in the UK that were already doing this, the 15 minute city. All right, so number five, more pandemics and vaccine mandates. Well, the last pandemic made over 110 new billionaires. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, too, it's too lucrative. They're not gonna let it go. Now, 110 new billionaires just, just think about that. Um, this is not Bill Gates of the world that added an extra 30 billion to their, to their, no, this is new billionaires. Pfizer alone, Pfizer alone created five new billionaires. So just ask yourself, you're a human being. If you have a business concept that's made you more money in two years than it would do in five lifetimes, and you know the right people for this to happen over and over again, well, you would do it too, right? And that's what they're doing. So they already called the next pandemic, but they changed the words afterwards. They called it's coming 2025, it's gonna be really bad. And it's called catastrophic contagion. And of course it was a big roar, people got really angry and because they know that these people are setting this up and now they're changing them. Now if you Google it now, they're saying, well, look, that was just a simulation, we said. We never said it was coming. We said it's a simulation. No, no, we have to be ready. Well, guess what? The last time they had a simulation was August of 2019, just three weeks before the breakout of COVID. And it was called Event 21. And they actually talk about the outbreak of coronavirus coming in weeks, and they did. How did they know? So now they're already... And that's what these people always do. They'll always tell you in advance just to get some reaction and get, get, you know, we're going to jump in the cold water. You first, you want to put a little water. They want to, you know, slowly cook you like a frog into it. So when they talk, you got to listen carefully and you need to be able to look forward where they're heading. This is something I've become really good over the last 25, 30 years. Be able to do that. So lucrative, they're going to keep doing this. WHO, World Health Organization. Now they got 193 global states, state members, which is the whole world. They're gonna be voting, get this, that the World Health Organization needs to be the boss of the world. Now, who is the boss of World Health Organization? Is Bill Gates, why? Because he's the biggest donor. We all know that. You go to the website, you'll see the biggest donors. So that's why these guys use their money for. They get use their money, to control companies and organizations and governments. So the World Health Organization put out this, they want the countries to have this treaty. Now, the wording is important. Treaty is something that you commit to and every country in the world needs to commit to the World Health Organization's new powers because they're saying, but the last pandemic, you know, we're kind of unorganized and people died for that. No people died because you guys released the virus. But you know, at the end of the day, um, they're saying we should have full control of every country. So we'll tell the governments of the world what a what is a pandemic. And when you read the definition of pandemic, you shake your head. It doesn't even have to be a virus that affects people. It could be something for climate change. Of course, anything could be for climate change. It could be uh, something that affects animals. You know, something in the fish or whatever. All of that could be a pandemic, and then they can tell your government, your health department in your country, what they need to be doing. Buy all these vaccines, lockdown mandates, because last one, a lot of countries did not comply. If they comply shortly, they stopped quickly. So now they thought, well, we made all that money. 
and a lot of countries didn't comply. Imagine if we get full control of, then now your government becomes the puppet of the big boys. And so every time I hear Bill Gates came to a country, like recently it was in Kenya, I tell my Kenyan friends, be, be worried, be worried. You know, he, he, he's the most hated man in the world and he just showed up talking to your prime minister, at your president. So this is where the World Health Organization want to do. They get to decide what's a pandemic. They get to decide what's the measure to be taken. And when you read it, that includes seizure of property. It is absolutely insane, insane. It's not about writing a fine because you didn't follow the, it's like they got some draconian clauses in there. So I'm hoping, you know, I, I think a lot of these member states will say, forget it. We're not, we're not, we're not signing off to this um, initially anyway. But then these guys have the ways of force countries into treaties. You know, I won't get into that today, but I'm hoping there'll be some countries that are strong enough that say, you know what, we're not doing that. So that's the next one, WHO. They'll decide what's a pandemic and, um, and what's the mandates and the, the actions of countries must force on their population. Number seven, ESG. ESG stands for environmental, social, and governance. Um, this is the biggest scam. This is to eliminate all the small and medium-sized businesses. They want to kill all of us because they want the Amazons of the world to control. There's like a thousand of the biggest corporations in the world. And they don't want mil tens of millions of hundreds of millions of businesses. They want them just the way it was in the pandemic. It was great. You know, it's funny. Uh, a small mom and pop shop was a risk. You couldn't go to buy your groceries in a small corner store but yet Costco, where 5,000 people were lining up next to each other, that was not a risk. And pe some people question this, like that doesn't make any sense. But nobody knew why. Well, here's why. And a lot of those businesses closed and they never opened again. So ESG is designed to close businesses because it got these ridiculous mandates that small to medium-sized businesses cannot meet. And it's designed to kill about 90% of the small to medium-sized businesses, including, by the way, the farmers. Now, if you don't know about this, by the way, you guys should take a notes and check all the stuff out. You know, you have to put in some time like where I did, but at least you see, all, you see them all. The farmers if, in Netherlands, you probably saw it on social media. They're bringing and putting manure on government buildings. This has been going on for a year now. Because the Netherlands, they want to kill all the farming there. Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of times you ask yourself, well, why would they do that? Just understand this. The matter is far more complicated than you and I understand. But the simple uh, all of it is this. If there are farmers around, people can buy their food. They stay strong and resilient. If farmers are not around, you're relying on a government to sell you the food, then you become very you know, obedient. So it's, everything is about, about um, control. Now, you've probably seen social media. If you haven't, just you can have fun with that. Uh, farmers in Canada, Alberta, uh, people on a plane taking pictures from the plane. And then it says F U Trudeau. So what they've done, they've put it on their crops because our dictator is trying to do the same thing that Netherlands is doing here. When I was in Kenya, there was a young lady there helping us with our event, but she was a lawyer for agriculture. And she told me that the Kenyan uh, farmers are stopping the farming because uh, it's getting too expensive for them to, to farm. So at the end of the day, uh, that's what ESG is all about. ESG is all about to make sure the small and medium-sized business are gone and the top 1,000, 1,500 corporations in the world, they sell everything, they make everything for the world. Number eight, CBDC, replacing money. Now, this is where you, where you lose all the control on, how, on your spending. Pretty much, I will tell you, you know, um, what you need to, you ask questions, you have to ask all the questions in the world where, you know, um, they, you know how to spend, how to save, what to, how to invest, because CBDCs are programmable money, right? So right now when you go cash in your pocket, you go buy whatever you want, no one can stop you. On the CBDC, you can't do that, especially, you know, during the pandemic, the government was throwing up money to buy votes. 
what they're doing, what uh, what they what they will be doing, and people buying, I don't know, crypto, they're buying stocks and saving. The savings were all time high because these guys kept throwing money at people, and uh, to get votes. Well, with the CBDC and this coming, they can't do that anymore because it will tell you how much of it you could spend on fish, meat, gas, how you could spend it, how, how you cannot spend it. It could be your salary, it could be your business income. They get to dictate to you how you're going to spend that money. Do you want to do a charity to some, somebody and these guys don't like the charity? You can't do that. So that's the thing about the CBDC. Now, it's already out in Nigeria. I feel bad for them. You just go research that what happened to them in the last, uh, what happened to them in the last uh, three weeks. Essentially, what happened was Nigeria said, come back, bring your old bills, get new bills. When people went in to get a new bills, they found out there was no bills. And everyone got digital currency, the new Naira, the CBDC. The problem is only 40% of Nigerians actually have a smartphone. So they can take a little bit of money out, I think $30 a day. They're saying they can only feed their kids. It's craziness what's going on. Craziness. And 10 years ago, it happened in Cyprus, right? In Greece as well. So this is how they're going to switch everybody into the CBDC. Basically, they get to, the government will tell you uh, how you can spend it, how you can, how you can save, and how you can invest, right? So this is starting in 2024, by the way. So... And some countries in Nigeria are already testing it. By the way, yesterday, Fed Now, which is the US CBDC, got released yesterday. So it's in testing now. This is going to eliminate the US dollars. And you should expect the US dollar collapse coming soon. So, uh, again, a lot of stuff may be heavy for you because you're not researched. But, and I'm trying to give you like two and a half years of research into, into two sessions. You know, a lot of times I say, you don't have to understand it, just accept it, right? And uh, research it. Because it's, it doesn't matter how many times I have to repeat this, it's, it's heavy. You really have to go on YouTube and put the great reset and watch about 50 videos. Then it's just, oh, shoot, I get it now, right? It's just because it's so outrageous. And you have to hear from other people talking about it. All right, so <clears throat> number eight, Full control of your wealth by rising inflation. So we all know about inflation being high. And then you kind of wonder, you know, uh, instead of, you know, trying to de deal with things, what they will do is stop the logistics, create uh, customs issues, things that add to inflation, right? Lockdowns, all these things that add to inflation. So... What's going to happen next is that you're going to have a collapse, uh, currency collapse. It's already happened with Lebanon. It's happened with lots of countries. Um, it happened to Canada. Canada's money is down well, about 15 to 16% compared to the U.S. Look what happened to Euro recently. It crop, uh, collapsed to match the U.S. It's already happening, right? So um, how do you get people? So what happens? Let me go back to this. So when inflation happens, that means everything costs you more. That means the money that you have in your hand just can't buy the things you need. So you have to spend more of it. So they're trying to get all the money that's in the system right now, people, out. And they're doing it multiple ways. And one of the ways they are doing that is through inflation. If it's going to cost you double or three times to buy the things you used to buy before, if the inflation is like a 30%, Forget about this 8 9% because they don't include food and energy. It's stupid. How the, the real inflation is about 30%, right? So if your inflation at 30% and then your raise is at 3%, what happens, right? You have to put more in of your investment or borrow. In order. So they're taking the money out of every country, taking it out of the system through inflation, stealing your wealth. So I'm telling all my friends, um, if you got any cash sitting around, I suggest you just put it into something, you know, real estate something, because um, the, the most currencies are collapsing, uh, and the few strong ones, they will be collapsing soon. So, you know, if you have a million dollars in the bank account, and say in 2019, and today you would have a million dollars, same million dollars, except 
the million dollars today will have bought you less than half of what it will have got you in 2019 because of inflation. So that's, they're stealing our wealth, right? If you got cash, they're stealing our wealth. People say, you know, my house went up in value. You know, well, you know, it didn't really go up in value. You know, it just that the money values went down. So now they need more of it to buy the house. The problem is everything else you buy is also has gone up. So the salary that you get has to go through all these things, right? Food and energy. And all of that has gone up far more than your salary. So they're stealing your wealth. It's really important that we understand. Now, what's I think what is happening, what I, what I believe is going to happen because they're talking about it. They're not saying it the way I'm saying it. You know, Biden said the other day the biggest uh, the biggest um, uh, uh, threat that we have is an attack. Well, he meant a cyber attack, uh, not really a war. So, for me, I'm looking at okay, why would the president of the United States say that? Then I started researching it, and clearly it fits right within here because uh, they need an, another event, just like the pandemic or 911. They need an event. To get everybody to sh you know move into into electricity because a lot of people using gas right now. Oh, a cyber attack took down the grid. Cyber attack took down gas, water. Cyber attack took down the banks. Banks, right? Go to the bank machine, can't take money out. So, and all of a sudden, government comes and says, "Hey, download this digital wallet." Yeah, the banks are down, but download this digital wallet, and we give you in return. CBDC, the money that they want you to have. Now, if you're not paying attention, okay, well, I guess I can still buy stuff with it, yes, as long as they agree to it. So if you decide to buy something, and it's happened, by the way, it's happening already, because how many times when you get your, use your credit card somewhere, I don't know, the casino, or I buy crypto, or I don't know, somewhere, and then they said, the credit card company says, nope, you can't use it. Because, uh, so this stuff is already there. But now it's going to become pretty much everything because the cash, as you know it, is going away. All right. So <clears throat> let's continue with this. Uh, so it's a, it's, it's a new world order. And how do we deal with this? And how, um, uh, how, how does our business can help? Quick recap, we talk about the digital ID. Well, it's gonna replace all the physical IDs, right? Pretty much will stop your life if they want to. Uh, in China, when they had the collapse in the realistic collapse, remember Evergrande, the big builders? And when people rushed to try to go to those provinces to see what happened to the property and money and banks, um, because in China they already have this digital and to stop them from flowing into these banks, what they did, they make their IDs go red, meaning that they're not the COVID risk. So they had turned back home. They could not pass the borders of each province or they got apprehended, right? That's how easy it becomes when you have a digital ID. So it's there to stop your uh, control every aspect of, of your life. Um, and it connects and exposes all aspects of your life to whoever checking you out from the government side, right? So it's already coming out now, mostly there's in most countries starting 2024, 2025. So it's important to you, this is not something that's coming 30 years from now, guys. Oh, it's not in my lifetime. It's called Agenda 2030. That's the name, World Economic Forum. So everything I'm talking about has to be implemented before 2030. That's in our lifetime. So, and a lot of these things will happen next day, year or two, year or two. You know, in Canada, they're already testing their CBDC here. So we'll see how they're going to roll it out. What, you know, what event is going to happen to force us uh, all into, into a CBDC coming out of Canada. Number two, they want to control your, all your activities through social score. Pretty much it's the end of the democracy and freedom. Um, you can never disagree with the government anymore. You know, so uh, just imagine, you know, last pandemic, we had 10 million Canadians. 10 million Canadians, that's one third of the population, couldn't travel. 
because they disagreed with putting this toxic thing in the body or the kid's body. Well, on this system, they would all have a bad social score. It would ruin their life. It would ruin their life. So this is a very scary, scary thing. Uh, social score will come shortly after digital ID or it's attached to it to come together. The carbon footprint, we talked about that. The countries, uh, the cities that are already doing this now, the 15 minute city is Bristol, Birmingham, Canterbury, Ipswich, and Sheffield. Fifth one is Oxford. Now these four said, these five, they're doing it now. Oxford said it would have it fully functioning 15 minute city by 2040. You can imagine that you have to live and within 15 minutes walking of your home. So this is what the 15 minute city research at Google it. Get, get yourself prepared. So they want the full control of your rights with the pandemics and mandates. Remember, we talked about all these billionaires they created. Well, guess what? You know, another thing the pandemics offer is extra power, right, to the government. All these extra mandates of government was, was based on emergency, right? In Canada, our prime minister, for the first time since the World War II, invoked the Emergency Act where people just demonstrating because they didn't want to take the shot. They were run over by horses. Bank accounts were seized. Assets were seized because they just did not want to, they want to control the bodies. It's already happened, right? It's already happened. So, um, and he's, because it's so profitable, you know, you're in business. I mean, hey, something works. You want it to continue, right? Uh, you want it to, you know, keep doing it. If you have all the right people in, in, in places and you have good control of the governments as they did, right? So this is something that is is part, is part of the future now, unfortunate. So <clears throat> what did this pandemic do? Well, you have extra power to the government, made a ton of money for people and uh, made a lot of people sick because it's all around you. You're not paying attention. If you are, then you know, everybody on me is either sick Something is spurring up that wasn't there, or something that was there was under control, it's gone out of control. People are falling left and right. And at the end of it, there is something called excess death. Write it down excess death and research it. And what excess death is basically, you end, they have these charts how many people are supposed to die every five years. And the excess death of every country, you know, the scientists who are getting the information are releasing on YouTube, they're going to YouTube with excess death. And you find a lot of prominent scientists, they talk about excess of every country. And uh, on an average, 20, 25% more people are dying now than before pandemic, it's not mid 2021. Uh, so, and they're non COVID related, clearly says non COVID related excess death. So, but you know what? Six people, uh, you know, two things about sick people one, they're, or they're obedient because they're needy. So, if you want to keep people quiet, keep them sick. Uh, number two, is uh, they need medication. It's, it, so it makes sense if you're in business, you know, it's like the old days, you know, Microsoft, when you get, we come with the software, you know, the software companies would release a virus too that would sell you an antivirus. So they release a, uh, a virus themselves to infect your computer, then it will sell you antivirus to go deal with it. So this is a type of evilness that's going on around the world. All right. So they want, we talked about WHO, ESG, CBDC, we talked about all of that. All right, so how do you prepare for this? Like, how do you survive the great reset? So the whole foundation of what they're doing is based on digital ID, right? Uh, and based on stopping your mobility, right? So of course the CBDC, right? So everything's about a button. You know, CBDC, no, you can't buy that. Digital ID, oh, you can't travel. It's all about a button. Everything become on the blockchain. And then in one portal, which they don't have that access now, right? Because you have all these different documents, MasterCard, Visa, they're not attached to each other. Government doesn't have access to it. So, but everything goes into one. Well, one button stops everything, right? That's what it's all about. So how does opulence help you? That's what I said earlier. This is a lot more than a uh, way of making money now, guys. This is a lot more than that. It's now, it's about freedom. It's about independence. 
So very first thing is they go, they want your digital, they, they implement the digital identity and you want to protect your identity. Like we're in Canada, soon could be somewhere else. If you're not in Canada, you're safe with us, right? You're safe with us because we don't respond to foreign requests. If things get tough in Canada, I'm already setting up multiple places worldwide. We already established multiple places worldwide. I can move my command center somewhere else because the, the good news is, you know, it it's going to take them a long time to try to infiltrate the world and a lot of countries would never fall for it. The weaker countries with big population, you're in trouble. If you got a population of 50, 60, 100 million, most likely your government will cave in because they're in debt. But smaller countries, 5 million, 10 million, you know, the Arab countries, I don't see the Arab countries budging on this thing. I don't see countries like Iran budging on this thing because they have no relationship with the West. They don't they learn to be independent. So there's a lot of great countries in the world like Panama, you know, Cayman Islands, the places where they're self-sufficient themselves already. They cannot be bribed into stuff like this. So you have great options. And Opulence puts it all on the table for you. So we're in Canada and your identity is safe with us. You can always use a company name with us. For example, if, if you become red flagged in your country, you know, you can always use a company name, use your kid's name. And if you get a digital ID in your country, you're banned or you're blocked, you know, it, that cannot stop your Opulence business because we don't care about that stuff, right? You know, they're not gonna, we're not gonna block you because somehow you have a problem with your government, you know, for whatever. So, you know, nobody even knows, nobody knows that you even have an opulence business, right? So this is a huge guys because your job cannot do that. Your traditional business cannot do that, right? But you can do that with your opulence business. It's under your control. It's safe. No one can just take that away from you. No one can confiscate your opulence business. You know, you can build, look what happened to McDonald's in Russia. How many thousands of franchises instantly closed? Doesn't matter how big your company is. What happened to the biggest, some of the biggest banks in the US last week? Collapse, closed. They can close anything. They can't close when you have it all in here and you can travel. You go. You don't like your country? pick up and go. Your paycheck is in its place. You will not miss a beat. Your business is open. It's not closed because you're not there. It's not suffering because you're not there. It's going. And we've already seen people like Erfro and Ronan, when they took off because whatever reason they had to leave, they, they the checks grew while they were away from home. We've already proven that, right? So that's opulence. When you're with us, you're safe. You have a business that's fully under your control. In your cell phone, pick up and go. No one knows, no one needs to know. I'm a, I'm a big fan of paying taxes, you know, and I used to always talk about that. And I still believe in that, but you have that choice. You have that choice that, you know, you have to report your income. To your government, and I think you should. You know, the ch challenge I have now is giving them information that they could use against you in the future. So you can claim your income another way, but the opulence business is 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 a safety net. The social score, well, the social score. If you got a low social score in the job, you won't get hired. Because low social score in traditional business, nobody will buy your product. No one will sell you anything. Say in opulence, it doesn't matter if you got bad social score in your country. Your business comes from a big organization and you get paid on CV that comes from many, many countries. Nobody knows you anyway, just, just your team maybe knows you because you know people check the company score and the company score was always gonna be good. So the social score is gonna be a real problem for people. You know, these are innocent people too. There's not a credit score where somebody screwed up. This is just somebody decided to go on social media and try to vent like I do about, you know, when my friends get sick or something or the government does, all of a sudden they get a bad social score, right? And in the new world that's coming, that's gonna hurt you. 
You could lose your job. Yeah, I'm sure you guys all heard people who lost their job. Uh, I'm sure you heard it because the employer ran on social media. So how they were behaving, just how they were behaving on social media, they lost their job. So this is already going on. Now imagine, it's not even official. Now imagine if there is such a thing official like a social score, the way it is in China right now, then you get forced into compliance, right? Number three, carbon footprint. Well, that's, you can work from anywhere here. You work, it's work from home, it's e-commerce. You, you know, so you're not gonna, you don't actually even need to drive, right? A lot of your money comes from other places. So that's not gonna affect us. You can't do that with a job, right? You can't do that with a business. You gotta drive there and back. But here, your carbon footprint is almost nil. And it protects your mobility, right? Here's another thing too, get a multiple passport. Opulence gives you the opportunity to make enough money to be able to get another passport somewhere else. A job doesn't allow you to do that, right? A job doesn't allow you to do that. But you can make enough money to be able to get passports somewhere else. Have multiple passports. And here's the thing, even if job allowed you to do that, even if traditional business allowed you to do that, you can pick up and go. Your job doesn't move. Your traditional business doesn't move. But guess what? Your opulence business moves anywhere you want to go. You can do that with your opulence business. You can't do that with your job. Doesn't matter how good it is. You can't do that with traditional businesses, no matter how big it is. You can't do that. But you can do that with your job, with your opulence uh, uh, business. Number four, future pandemics. You know what? Opulence has proven already on the last pandemic. They couldn't shut us down. We're the best year in 2020. We never closed one day. Not one day. Well, you got shut down your jobs, didn't you? You got shut down your traditional business, didn't you? So future pandemics, we already been there. We've already been there. Canada acts up, we'll run it somewhere else. That's all I do every day in the back end is spreading our footprint worldwide. Make sure that on future pandemics, and they're coming, that we stay open for you guys. Every single day, they what we've done for 18 years running. 18 years running. So it's a web-based business for you guys. We drop ship all over the world. So if you get locked in your country, you're still building. You're still making money. We ship all over the world for you, right? We have multiple distribution centers now. And that helped us so much during the last pandemic because we had products everywhere and we just had to decide which was the easiest way to get in certain countries. You know, it was a lot of expense, but at least we had those options. A lot of companies closed the doors. They could not do that, right? So again, jobs and traditional businesses, got shut down and most of them never opened up again. Your opulence business never closed. No one could question that. No one could threaten that. Your check was on time. You ordered, it was delivered. You emailed, we responded. You called, we answered. You wanted products for pandemic, we created it. It's just so much more than a way of making money, isn't it? I mean, you can buy seashells and sell it and try to make money, but this is more, if we just look at our business as something where you make money, we've really, really degraded who we are. We've taken a Rolls Royce and say, and, and you know, brought it down to a tuk-tuk level, you know, tuk-tuk, those three-wheel three -wheel scooters you see in India, right, in Thailand. So, this is a lot more than that. It's a lot more than that. And I'm sharing with you, the world that's coming, you're not gonna like a lot of it. I'm telling you, you're not gonna like a lot of it. Learn your opulence business because it gives you so much freedom. It protects you so much. It gives you a lot of options. Protect that business. Number five, WHO. So they're gonna come out with the next pandemic, what they perceive to be pandemic. And 
if your country has a sheep as a president, and there are some um, that they're going to bow to the elites because their bank account is being filled up from back end, you know, the, the opulence business allows you to move. Just leave, move, at least temporarily. They were running it. They were afraid it. Move till the silliness slows down. So here's the thing. You got time right now to build your business till the next one arrives. The next one could be anything. Could be a cyber attack. Could be anything. But you have a chance to build a team right now globally. And if you don't like your country, leave and your income will never stop. I promise you that. Or your job cannot promise you that. And your business, traditional business, cannot promise you that. So your office business is in your phone. It's operational in all countries. We pay in all countries. We drop ship in almost all countries. Your job and traditional business cannot do that.